All right, folks. We're back at it again. Doing something a little different today. I'm leading into uh, our new series and YouTube channel. I'm doing a backup recording. So I'm doing kind of like this thing where I do my recordings for the videos. But sometimes this Twitter space thing either drops off or cuts out. And for series I don't want to have that done. Subpar audio. Not that I'm always okay of having the best audio because sometimes I'm switching between laptops and sometimes I'm in an RV you don't know about. <laughs> I'm driving around doing things. And my better is always at my disposal when I'm doing different things away from my house. But hopefully I'll have a, a clean audio with Twitter spaces for those that are here live and for those that are going to be watching my recording. I have hopefully a clean version that put on the YouTube channel. I'll be in the efforts and then up on the YouTube channel. I'm trying to protect myself here. But on live session, this you're going to get the blue color eye. It's exactly what happened. And if I get on some kind of a roll, I can't die with that. It's not why I'm, it's not why I'm trying produce a live session like this, I actually kind of get nervous about it because I know I have a tendency to just go off the rails sometimes. But a lot of you like that too. So like I said, I tweeted it most times this week that if you get enough time, I'll offend, I'll offend everyone. So just give me the, the, the time and space to do it, I'll do it. But this is a... Uh... You have an expression where you say you try to make ends meet. It means you have to match your income with that of the bill money has to match up with what your expenses are going to be for that month or that week or that particular day. And sometimes individuals, and I've had this early on as a young man, most of the time I didn't have the ends to meet. I had to work two jobs, you know, two, one full-time, one part-time job. And it sucked. And in trading, a lot of you are starting off in that circumstance where you don't have a whole lot of time. You don't have a lot of freedom to sit in front of the charts. And just the study is an endeavor. So I commend you for doing that because I had to do the same stuff. And it's not easy, and it's not easy to be motivated when everyone around you doesn't understand why you're even considering it, because it seems like a pipe dream. So I'm going to try to, in this new series, and I don't know how many videos there's going to be, but I want to do the best thing I can for directing the new skill set that you've acquired. So in 2022, I've been obviously teaching you a price action model that is very simple. It's very streamlined. It's not a whole lot of things that you got to be worrying about. It's not complicated as the detractors and the people out there looking for clout want to tell you. They'll do anything to get you from learning how to do this because it works and it works better than everything else out there. And people are getting funded with it. And that's one of the topics I'll talk about in this series as well. I don't know what episode it'll fall in, but I will tackle the funded account stuff. I don't have any affiliate in any company, so I'm not going to rep anyone. And please don't contact me anymore. I don't do those types of partnerships. But I want to be the mentor that obviously has given you a skill set, has given you an understanding about how price should book and what you should be looking for in price. But now that you have this skill set that you're 
getting better at practicing each day and week and now month. What are you going to do with it? See, that's one of the things that got me in trouble as a developing student. Because once I learned how to put a trade on and make money, and initially I was doing it with blind luck, I didn't know what I was going to do once I had initial success. Have you ever considered that? It's funny because you have all these individuals out there that are going to teach you, and they very well may be good, profitable educators. They may be walking the walk and talking the talk and doing everything legitimately. But they're trying so hard to get you to be able to do well so they can take you on a pony show. Here's my one trick pony. Here it is. This is, this is the person I trained and they'll rep that person. And there was a website. I'm not sure if they're still in business, but forexmentor.com. Um, I bought every single thing from that website early on when it first came out because I literally was entertained by the garbage that they would throw around. And so many people came through that website claiming to be good traders or educators and such. And there was one older lady, and this has relevance, so I'm not going off on a rabbit trail, but uh, there was a lady there, and I can't remember her name, but she paired up with one of the guys that was doing like coaching over there. And she learned from Chris Lorre. She learned um, from, I guess, this naked price action. And she got pretty good at finding very, very short-term intraday setups. And for the life of me, I wish I could remember her name. It's going to drive me crazy. But they ended up releasing a course. And uh, something to the effect of, like, frequent trade setups. or something. The, the name of it escapes me. But apart from her and Chris Laurie being the only one I thought that had a real good understanding of price action, uh, it's beyond retail, not your classic support and resistance stuff. He kind of, like, shined out of all of them over there. And let me just drop this real quick. I happened to get pushed an email where someone actually went to Chris Laurie's Twitter and wrote ICT's better. Please don't embarrass me like that. I mean, I gave one guy out of the entire industry a nod and it's not meant for you to go over there and say, well, ICT does it better. Yeah, you know, I don't, I don't want that. Okay. I got, I think he's a decent guy. I understand he tries to stay in his own lane because he knows wherever I go, it's a carnival, okay? And he doesn't want that drama because he knows it's not good for business. And he's run a business you know, for a number of years trying to do what he's doing. And ultimately, I think he does a good job. I don't know what he's doing recently, but he asked me to look into his stuff. He gave me free access to it. I gave him my advice as to how he should disseminate his information, how he should teach it, and get away from the, the workshop stuff. Okay, he can get into this is the content, make it uh, approachable where people can go in and digest it, not just go to a workshop, cram it all in there, get a book that may not really answer everything. But don't go over there and harass that guy. Okay. I mean, Larry Williams was harassed, you know, because I said that he was the real first real mentor of mine. You know, ICT said you, you taught him personally side by side. I've never said that. But all these ideas of mentors, okay. They teach you, like this older lady on Forex Mentor. She came out with a, a course that basically was taking you into a very simple little setup that repeated every single day, and she would find it on one of the currency pairs. Now, I thought that was a really handsome way of approaching price action, and she was showing a spreadsheet. She didn't show any live accounts, but she showed a spreadsheet where she tallied what she more or less made in her trades. Now, did she take those trades? I don't know. I don't care. I liked the idea of what she was trying to do. Now, I don't think she was a good educator. And they were using her as the pony that was, look, here's proof that we have something that works. But the proof was, well, lacking because there was no real account. It was just a spreadsheet. So I'm bringing that up because Everyone in the industry that teaches, we all want students to do well. Okay. We want that. The problem with that is we can give them a skill set, but the personality and the real life issues that that person has to encounter every single day of their life 
and whatever adversities are plaguing them, you know, their job, their work schedule, their spouse, their significant other, their children, their single parents, health problems, age, everything that you may not really consider as a factor in your development. Now, when you have profitability, they ping in. And they will either entice you to do things stupid like it did me, spend money frivolously thinking it was always going to keep coming in. And I had cracked the code early on when I hadn't. I was getting lucky. No one taught me what to do once profitable. So I blew up. Being profitable without any direction is like a beautiful multi-million dollar sailboat without a rudder. You're out there wherever the wind's going to carry you. And it's hard to understand if you've not obtained profitability yet, but it's a problem being profitable. It sounds like an oxymoron. It sounds like this can't be true. How can you have a problem being profitable? But yet you do once you get there because you start wondering, okay, well, I've been making this much, this consistently. I do have losing trades, but I come out on top over the course of the week or the month. But where do I go next? What do I do with it? The exercise of just doing it alone is honing your experience and your edge. That goes without saying. Where do you go? What do you aim for? What are you, what are you trying to do? What structure should you start applying to your business of trading? See, it's not enough to say, well, I want to make a million dollars because a million dollars is not a lot of money. I've already spent a million dollars this year and I don't have much to show for it. But you have to have a goal. You have to have something to aim for. And there has to be a structure behind that. So one of the series I had intended to do once I completed the private mentorship stuff and we're done now, that... I would sit down and kind of give a public blueprint of what I wish I would have been given as a 20 year old, just discovering profitability, figuring out that, yes, I could be consistent with bonds. Yes. I could be consistent with the S and P and I put away all the mega trade. I have to do only those types of setups, you know, where the big drops, in the marketplace. I was only focusing on that because Larry Williams said, that's where I should be focusing. And because I was looking for that all the time, there was all these trades that were occurring daily, weekly, monthly, that I were, well, not were, but I was really not paying attention to or even aware of because I didn't have the skill set at the time. I was profitable, but I was looking for big, big, big trades most of the time. So I would do a bond trade or an S&P trade and one contract and then realize that I'm consistent with one contract. And you've recently saw me this year just do one contract over the S&P and NASDAQ and double the account. That was a real account. And I showed losing positions. I did all kinds of things to handicap myself and still doubled the account. So for some of you, 100% return sounds too lofty but i can tell you what you've already been given is easy to obtain that but you have to have the skill set and discipline to adhere to picking your right setups and trying not to trade every single day i want to have a setup that gives me a consistent framework that goes into the marketplace that even a neophyte that doesn't have a, a long time behind them of profitability, but just recently found consistency with this model on YouTube that they can go in and feel comfortable. This is the setup I'm looking for. It makes sense. It's there. I can engage it. And then once it gets to a profit objective, stop, turn the computer off and go do something else. That's, that's what I have in mind for the new developing recently profitable student with this mentorship. But you now have a problem, don't you? You want to do more. You want to do more. You want to trade more. Just like I started thinking, well, I'm doing one contract. And I was trying to make $1,000 a month to save so I could retire at 40. I was willing to put those 20 years in. But then I realized that 
wow, I could do a thousand dollars a week. With no real effort. This is a lot easier than I thought it was. Now, don't let me mislead you, folks. This is the 20 year old that was getting lucky. And I started thinking to myself, wow, I could do this every week. And then it became, well, I could day trade the bonds. I'll look at the divergence between the 5, 10, and 30 year. And when they're diverging and I have a bias that's bullish, I know I can go in and buy it. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge. And then I started making $1,000 a day. So I'm 20 years old and I'm <laughs> looking around at my friends and they're working like one guy's working at a gas station. Another guy, he's working at a meat market where he's cutting up meats and such. And they're doing okay, I guess, for you know our age bracket. And I'm doing $1,000 a day in less than 45 minutes. And I'm thinking to myself, wow, you know, I can do a lot more if I started trading more contracts because making a thousand dollars a month that really just didn't do it for me. Once I started doing it consistently, I was like, ah, this is it's too easy. I need more like anybody else. So I went in and started trading more contracts and then realized $17,000 a week that jobs are now obsolete and stupid to me. I mean, I, I, why would I want to work when I can do this? So I started trading even more. I didn't have a direction as to where I wanted to go. Now let's contrast that with how I started November 5th, 1992. Thursday evening at nine o'clock in my aunt's family room, I cracked open that <laughs> lame book by Ken Roberts. And that's not that to be disrespectful, but I thought that I had figured it all out. That simple little book was going to do it for me. All it did was give me the fire to start doing it. But I had a direction. I had a goal. What was the goal? If I could make a thousand dollars a month and save that by the time I'm 40, I'll have a million dollars. And honestly, I didn't understand the effects of inflation. I didn't think about all those things. I just wanted to have a million dollars because back then a million dollars, that was really something. A million dollars is nothing now. Homes cost that now, and they're not even really worth it. Period. Okay? A lot of people out there on social media saying, I got a million dollar house. No, you have a house that's overpriced. Okay. And the home that I purchased that I'm speaking to you in right now, I paid $638,000 for. Is it worth it? No. They're saying I could get seven fifty dollars for it now. Is it worth it? No. So a million dollars is not a lot of money. But in the beginning, when I sat down that Thursday evening at nine o'clock, at the completion of reading that book, because I read it from cover to cover, I couldn't put it down. Before I went to bed, I had pen and paper out and I'm calculator crazy, clicking the buttons. Okay, if I do this, if I do that. You know what I'm talking about. You've done it too. You're sitting at your job. You're sitting there bored. Over the weekend, you can't wait to start trading. Okay, if I go in and I get 10 pips this day, I get 10 more pips over here and you know, <laughs> you know, you're nodding your head, you're smiling, you're laughing, you know exactly what it is. You, your calculator is crazy. Okay. But that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But as soon as you start saying, I want to make millions and millions of dollars in your first year, that's, that's stupid. But what I was doing was I was coming up with a way where if I just did the lowest objective and say with losing trades and I eke out a net gain of $250 a week. That's $1,000 a month. That's obviously taking an effect for taxation and commissions. So I was preparing myself to have adversity. I was preparing myself to be imperfect. And I had structure to what I was doing, why, why I was trading. I'm trying to eke out a net gain after all costs and taxation of $250 a week. Now, there's an average of 4.3 weeks per month. Not every month has just four weeks. Some of them have five. But I did the math simply on four weeks and 250 a week. So that would give me my $1,000. And I was going to stick to that. I was going to work a job. I don't care because when I'm turning 40, I'm not going to be working for the man. I'm not going to be doing those things everybody else does. The, the structure of me doing that 
once I started making money, I abandoned it. In other words, when you have a vision, you have a plan for your, your future, it's best to obviously write it down. Write it down so that way it's codified and you know this is what you're aiming for. Something strange happens. There's a metamorphosis that occurs when you start making consistent money. Everything goes out the window. It's like casino time. You lose all aspirations for being structured about everything you're doing. You're just saying, well, let's just see what happens if I do this many contracts and I try to hold for this much. Something's changed, not for the better. So over years of looking back and looking at journal entries and the times where I struggled and the times where I had epiphanies where it felt like I was really gaining in my understanding. It was when I was referring back to having structure in the way I was trading, not in the sense that optimal trade entries or order blocks in their infancy, none of those types of things. I'm talking about the structure of what it is I'm doing as a trader. What's the motivation? What's my goal? They have to be specific because if you don't have specific goals, you won't know when you're going outside the lines and boundaries of what would lead to realistic results getting to that objective. Would it be reasonable for me to expect a net gain in 1992 of $250? I know some of you are laughing, thinking $250. This guy's showing $7,000, $10,000 day. <laughs> Humble beginnings, folks. That's where you're at right now. Don't be afraid of that. Don't be ashamed of it. Everyone starts there, but most people fail right there. They don't ever come out of that. And I can tell you the blueprint to get out of that stuff and get to the next level and hopefully get to where I am now. You'll do things I'm going to talk about in this series and in this woodshed moment. Taking you to the woodshed and correcting your perspective on how you should be thinking you're going to make this money. Okay. Yeah, I have to have a very, very low hanging fruit objective. And then increase that gradually. Very, very small, very, very small, slow incremental modular gains. That's how you do it. If you jump and you think, okay, I have a low hanging fruit objective. I hit it. I've been hitting consistently. All right, now I'm just going to go. I want $10,000 a month. You're going to fail because you didn't make that transition from $250 a week to $500 a week to $750 a week, to $1,000 a week, to $1,500 a week. That's a gradual increase. You get acclimated to the risks, the feeling of putting on that type of trade as it grows exponentially. You don't even know what that feels like. You have no idea what that feels like. And the wins are scary as hell. They're so scary. Yes, I said it right. The wins, not the losses. The losses haven't really stopped you from trading. As long as you had money in your account, you kept taking trades. So that's not a fear factor for you. Mm -hmm. You're smiling again. That wasn't a deterrent for you to stop trading. As long as you had money in there. Oh, I lost. Okay, well, I'm going to pissed off now. I'm going in. I'm going to go in there for more. And they're going to pay me with interest. Oh, yeah. And the interest was paid. that You paid it. Now you're in greater drawdown or you're blowing your account like I did dozens of times over my career. There's no shame in that. You have to learn from those things. But you are going to be doing things at a slower pace. That's how you make ends meet. Things are hard. The markets are hard right now. I've said this throughout this year, and mentorship knows this as well. Things just are not as clean as they usually are. And it's not surprising. But it's not impossible. Obviously, you've seen that. So you have to pick your shots. You have to know what you're doing, why you're doing it, when you're doing it, and when to avoid it. That's part of your trading plan. But doing as part of your growth plan to make ends meet. Where are you going to start? Where's your low-hanging fruit threshold? What are you aiming for? Well, one of the things I like to teach is, and where did I get the $1,000? I don't, I don't have a specific reason for 1000 I just felt that $1,000 to me at that time was a lot of money. And if I could save it every single month, nobody in my family was saving thousand dollars and they were working. So I'm thinking I'm working as a vendor 
filling up candy machines and servicing soda and snack and cold food machines and coffee machines. If I can save a thousand dollars a month, I'm doing better than everybody else. And they can laugh at me that I'm making less than $300 a week, but I'm saving a thousand dollars a month. That's how I looked at it. So most people were looking at me when I would tell them what I was trying to do. I was going to learn how to trade and make money in the markets, the commodity markets, but that and they would, uh, crinkle their nose up at me and say, dude, are you serious? Like you're going to lose your ass in that. You're going to, you're going to lose your shirt. There's no way you're going to find profitability. People go broke and kill themselves. And, and that's true. And honestly, by the grace of God, I didn't do those things that would have led to those types of decisions. Not that I would have ever harmed myself, but I've known people that these markets have caused them to check out. And it's sad because they put too much stress on themselves in the beginning. See, that's what educators do wrong. And admittedly, when I first started teaching way before I should have in 1996, I didn't incorporate this in my teachings. I was teaching go for broke, get rich or die trying, that type of mentality, everything all in without being vulgar, I almost went there. <laughs> I did not incorporate what I was learning at the time, which was small little incremental shifts in growth going higher and higher gradually. And when I would get the big run-ups in my equity as a new trader, admittedly, I couldn't, I couldn't tolerate that excitement, that overzealous feeling of, I just made more money than my entire family collectively in a year, just this week. That's too much for a young man, especially from where I came from. Like, it's, it's unfathomable. It's a scary, overwhelming, intimidating feeling. And the only way I could make myself believe that it was real was I had to do it again, right away. Otherwise, it was luck. And sometimes I would get lucky again. But eventually, pushing my luck and trying to do better than the last two trades, three trades, more risk, more risk, no stop. It's going to go in my favor because the last three did over leveraged. And then the account gets blown. So what I discovered and how to prevent that was I came up with a way, like I first started, I had realistic, absolutely easy, easy objectives. Now think about this. I'm the guy that's already proven I've got millions of dollars and I've made millions of dollars and I can trade really very well. And I'm consistent. I'm the guy that's sitting down with you right now telling you, you should be aiming for about $250 a week. And it's laughable to some of you right now. I know, I'm not talking to you, but there's a lot of folks that have not found consistency yet. They just breached that, now I can be profitable, but you just arrived. You just got there. And this is where everybody without discipline blows up. They self-destruct. It's not worth mentioning the individuals that open up their account with live funds and just go right out and dust it and never see profitability. Those individuals are not the, the topic here because they're going to always be there. But my target audience here is the individuals that have gone through the 2022 mentorship. They've done the work. They've done the back testing. They've seen that it is a real pattern. It really repeats. It's very precise and it's consistent. But now you've been trading it and you're consistently finding it. Now you dabbled with live funds and you did that decision on your own. I didn't tell you to do that. What is the advice that I would give you if I could go back in time? What would I be telling myself? It would be do what you first started with. Go in there with a very easy objective. Now, some of you are already being critical and thinking, dude, $250 isn't going to do anything. Like that's just literally, well, guess for one tank a week now if you're getting one tank. And maybe, maybe. A week's worth of groceries if you're single with no children? I don't know. I mean, I know it costs me a lot of money to put food in the house for my boys because they're growing. and It's not easy. It's not cheap. But with ENDS, this series, I'm trying to cultivate this mindset as these new breed of traders that I've created here in 2022. 
how you can go out there and grab a hold of consistency and longevity. And it's the secret that I found, which I didn't place too much emphasis on in the beginning. I quickly abandoned it and it caused me to go into it. But if you go in and you start thinking to yourself, okay, if I can make $250 a week consistently and I stop there and I do that consistently, that's $1,000 a month. Now, you all want to leave your job. Some of you do it. Oh, I love my job. I really don't want to. You want to leave your job. Don't lie to me and don't lie to yourself. If you could sit home or sit on a beach somewhere and knowing that you only put in 90 minute work day taking a trade that you've basically stalked for a couple days and you made more than your job would have paid you for that month. Nobody wants to stay working in that environment. Okay, forget about it. You're not going to you're not going to convince me and you're not going to convince anybody else that you love your job so much that you want to give your personal time and freedom and be away from your family to be else rich. Okay, say that bullshit. Nobody believes that. So. You all want that. That's why we're here. That's why we're trading, because we want to lead the rat race. And guess what? That's commendable because there's a lot of people to say, you know, what's too hard. I'm just going to suck it up. And they medicate themselves with alcohol and drugs and extracurricular things in their marriages and their relationships. That's a destructive path. As if you just simply say, hey, I have to have a job right now. But I don't have to have a job my rest, the rest of my life. I don't have to have that. That's a decision you're making. And that is still in your control, even with the things that are in play right now. Inflation, you know, the struggles with, you know, employment, finding, you know, affordability with everything, housing, cars, all that stuff. I'm going to tackle all that stuff in this series. I'm making a practical trading series. See, it's not enough to simply say ABC, one, two, three, here's the system, here's the setup and go in and trade it and make money. That's not enough. It's too myopic. You're giving someone, you're giving a child a loaded gun. That's never good because harm is going to come. It's, it's inevitable. So I know I've given you a 50 caliber Barrett and you don't even realize it yet. But if you understand where you're going with it, what are you going to do with it? You'll see how easy it is to build Wealth. Wealth doesn't happen right away. Now, your goal should be to work towards being rich. Rich is not wealthy. Wealthy is where the money is making money for you. Rich is where you don't need to work to make your bills. There's a difference there. So what I have thought about, and I'm using my son Caleb as a guinea pig, things are very, very expensive right now. and my oldest son that lives with me, he's about to get his driver's license and he wants a Camaro. Now, no, <laughs> no sound mind, sober minded parent would buy their teenage boy a Camaro as their first car. I know that I wanted to do that, but my wife said, you know, that's not right. So I told him, I said, well, I will tell Caleb to give you his car, which I bought for him too. Now, before you get in there and start saying, oh, you shouldn't do this, you shouldn't do that. I think every dad should give their boy their first car. It doesn't have to be the best car, but I needed that help and I was younger and I got it. So I'm doing it for them. But their, uh, their tastes in cars obviously are much more expensive now without needing to be high-end cars. So case in point, I told Caleb, I said, look, part of your development is you're going to give up the car that I got you. And you're going to give that car as a starter car to your brother. And I'm going to give you a new Toyota Tacoma truck. So that was the plan a week ago, a week and a half ago, I think it was. And I bought it the same day I bought my own truck. So I told him, I said, this is the truck I think you should have. It's a decent one, six-cylinder. Uh, it's a Toyota. You can put a million miles on this thing. It'll drive forever, okay? 
he liked it. So I went and bought it. Now, Toyota Tacoma trucks. Now, some of you are already wanting to turn it off or turn off the space, but that's okay. You'll want to come back to these types of lessons once you lose your money. That truck cost me $55,000, and that's with them taking some off. Yeah. So I do a lot of deals with Jones Junction. I've spent about $600,000 just in two years buying cars from them. Now, I have a lot of volume, and I have a lot of, well, leverage when I go and I say, this is what I'm willing to pay. I know you're trying to make money, but this is what I'm willing to pay. They only came down 3000 off of that price of that Tacoma. Why? Because they had somebody in there ready to buy it too. But they were giving it to me. It may not be the best business practice to talk about openly, but because I do a lot of business with them, they were like, look, if you pay this, we'll sell it to you. But they're out there waiting to, you know, to talk to us about that too. So I scooped it up and bought it. Hate me. But he has that pickup truck sitting on my drive pad. He can't have it yet because this is all part of this series. I told him, I said, you have to leave the job you're working at because where he works at, they've messed his car up, which is another reason why my oldest son that's living with me is getting that car. It's already dinged up a little bit, not because of Caleb, but because of the people that he worked with that was jealous of what he drove. And he doesn't drive a very nice car. It's a Nissan. It's not that big of a deal. But where he lives and where he works that is a crime ridden area and it's been meant for him to be inspired to want to leave that do better. And if he gets this truck and he takes it down there to that job, it'll be ruined. So I told him, I said, you need to get away from that job, come up here in the money you're making. You need to get yourself a townhouse or you know, a condo or whatever and start living up here and get a job up here. So once he has that, then he can have that truck. So I bought the truck, but I put it in his name. I have not done any payments in a long time, but because he doesn't have any credit, I want him to establish credit. So I did a co-signing because he doesn't have any credit. He's too young. So he's now got a $900 a month bill. That's an end. That he now has to meet. So what does he got to do? That $1,000 plan. <laughs> so in his trades, he has to find a way to always be able to net enough money to cover that car note. It keeps him from doing what? Rolling the dice to do big trades. To do one more five-point move. Now, some of you might be thinking, that's diabolical. You're an evil father. <laughs> but my children didn't learn this because they watched me. They weren't even inspired. So I have to put them in situations where they have. Otherwise, they're going to be left to doing these types of jobs the rest of their life. Because I'm not going to just lay money in their lap. I'm not doing that. So... He's in a situation now that he has to make that work. And if he doesn't, he messes up my credit, which let's be honest, I wouldn't let that happen. But it would if the payments didn't be, you know, be kept up and he's building his own credit. So he has a vested interest in seeing that it's done right. His insurance only went up, I don't think, maybe 40 bucks a month. I think it was something it was less than 50 bucks let's call it that so he went from not having a car note to now having basically a thousand dollars a month that's not counting gas because i'm sure it'll probably spend a little bit more in fuel but if he works close to where i live and he works close to which is not determined yet because we don't know what we're gonna you know decide on. I don't know if a condo is the right thing for him. And I don't know if he's going to choose a townhouse or a single family, but his trading has to meet those needs because daddy's not paying for it. 
So I'm forcing him out of the nest into the real world. So you had a taste of what it's like to make money. You had a taste of seeing it in your account. But now what do you do with it? You have to be structured about what it is you're doing with it. So it helps him and anybody else that would apply this because it did it well. I didn't have a car note that was $1,000. I had a bill to myself. My first bill every month was $1,000 has to go into my savings account at Nations Bank. That's where I was doing business. So all of my focus was making money to guarantee that I had that $1,000 a month to pay me first. Then I had a car payment. Then I had insurance. Then I had gym memberships and, and, and you know whatever things I was doing that were extracurricular, which, which at the beginning of my trading wasn't much. Anytime I'd go out to eat with my friends, that, that kick around money, that pocket change, that would be after I paid my bills. And the first bill I paid myself was the $1,000 a month. So I lived on that principle that I paid myself first and then everything else, whatever I had left, I lived on that. So I'm forcing my son into that. And I'm telling you as my students to do that same thing. So you might be laughing and thinking, man, I can't, $1,000 ain't going to do nothing for me. Oh, really? Really? Okay, let's say you have a $2,500 a month mortgage. And that's pretty reasonable considering most houses are around $350,000. Know, that's like the median price right now in the U.S. With maybe utilities and your mortgage, you know, $2,500 is about there. What happens if you have $1,000 every month that goes towards that? How much of an ease on your stress and nerves would that bring you i can tell you that would be a very big weight and you're not getting everything covered but you're doing the right thing that's making ends meet and then doing that month after month slowly growing it more so then you're trying to make 1250 dollars a month and then 1500 dollars a month 1750 2000 a month what that does, it allows you to grow with a principle-oriented approach that you have to make this work with a sober, low-hanging fruit objective and target. You're not out there just throwing a dice and say, okay, let's see what I can get. What's the best that can happen in this situation? That's a laboratory experiment that's guaranteed to blow up in your face versus I don't need to do very much to make 250 a week. Even in Forex, you know, as stagnant as those pairs are right now, you can still eke out $250 a week. It's not, it's not a big deal. It's easy. If you're trading micros in the S&P and NASDAQ, if, you know, the futures market, not the $50 per point for ES, but the $5 per point, or not point, yeah, for, yeah per point, um, that would uh, still be possible to get that $250. You're going to work, but you can get it. But you want to have a approach that allows you to do the very least and let the compounding over time and the new equity increases, let that do the heavy lifting. That's what I did. That's the real secret to it all. Doing something very small, cookie cutter approach. When I was on baby pips, okay, what did I preach? If you were with me back then, 2010, what was I teaching? Find one good setup, 25 pips a week. Now, you can get five pips a day if you're ultra new and you're scared to get into a trade and hold it to the completion. Is there something wrong with going into a trade and getting out after five pips? No, not if you're new because you're going to be scared. You're going to be terrified. It's going to turn against you, and it might turn against you. But if it moves five pips in your favor and you're brand new and you cover and you get out, you give yourself that cookie. And then you say, okay, I'm aiming for 25 pips, but I got out. This entire week, every single day, and I got out with five pips of movement. It went to my target, or it came back and stopped me out. Who cares? But five pips it gave me, and I got it when it offered it to me. I closed it. And I did it every day, so now I got my 25 pips. Is there anything wrong with that? No. Not if you're a brand new trader? Nope, absolutely not. And then the next week, you go in and say, okay, I'm going to try to hold on and see if I can get to that eight pips 
or 10 pips of the 25 I'm getting. And then when you get it, even though it looks like it's going in your favor to your target, you close it at 10. Just do that. What you're doing is you're giving yourself experience. It's unrealistic for any educator, me included, to sit down and say, okay, here's what you do. Here's how you learn how to trade. And then go in there and hold it for your target or stop. And don't ever take any partial or early exits. That is stupid. You're stunting their growth. The best learning I had was gradually going into making money. I had flash in a pan wins. I ran up accounts real fast and real fast <laughs> blew them out. So I didn't understand the weight of making money like that because it's very stressful and it's addictive. Like I've never done cocaine. I've never done heroin. I've never done any kind of hard narcotics and I've never been drunk in my life. But I can tell you I've been high on the markets and that is a rush that is absolutely phenomenal. Like it is nuts. You <laughs> Once you feel it, you'll know what it means to know what it feels like to be high on the market because you feel invincible. You feel like you're the cock of the walk. There ain't nobody that's better than you. Nobody can touch you. Don't even talk to me. Don't even speak to me. Like you're beneath me. And that's, that's what happened to me. I, I became a jerk, a prick. But that's the worst route to take. If I would have stuck with my making ends meet approach, 250 a week, break it down modulate. Let's say your goal isn't $1,000. Say it's the full $2,500 a month for your mortgage. Not that you're depending on making that to pay your mortgage, but what you're trying to do is, is aim for some end you have to meet every month. Start with trying to just get half of it. Or... Try to meet your lowest. Maybe it's a cable. Maybe it's a, a credit card bill. And it may not even be $100. But go into your trading with that mindset. And I promise you, it seems silly. It seems like, what? You know, I'm in this to do big money. But you can't do big money unless you're consistently managing little money. Little bit of management on a little bit of money is going to teach you everything you need to know how to do large money over time. Because that little bit of money, if you keep doing it correctly, what does it become? More money. And that more money has a growth curve in terms of, okay, I'm used to trading one micro on ES and it's $5 per point. Now I'm at the point where I can trade two micros and then three micros. And at some point you start trading one mini. So now you have $50 per handle, $12.50 per tick. That feels a little bit different first time you do it. If you're not used to seeing that, it's a little intimidating. And you start thinking, that's oh, just too much. And I've watched guys on YouTube get in there and trade on a one minute chart and just about every single one minute candle they're trying to do something and it's moving around such a small little fluctuation, but they're, they're like, I, I gotta get out. Okay. It's going against me. Wh what are they trading? I don't think they know. So you have to know what you're doing. That's why I taught my son to just go after five handles, five handles. That's it. If he gets it in the morning, he doesn't have to do it in the afternoon. If he doesn't, get it in the morning, he goes in looking for it in the afternoon. If he has a losing trade in the afternoon, it doesn't, take, it doesn't take a trade. He eats it. If he takes a trade in the morning and he gets the five handles, he has the choice to go into the afternoon, but I tell him by the model, don't do it. Trade the next trading day and look for that setup again. There's lots of five handle moves all day long. There's lots of them. There's a plethora of them. So what is that? That's a low hanging fruit objective. It's real easy to find five handles every single trading day. Even in a choppy market, five handles can be had. Now, what does five handles mean to you? Well, it's going to mean different 
things to each one of us. To me, it's going to mean a whole lot. To someone like my son, you know, it could mean 1250 bucks. So 1250 bucks, if you just do that one time, just once a week, that's pretty good for not even being told. Now, I don't want him to stop there, obviously, as his father and as an as inner circle trader, ICT. <laughs> I want my son to be a freak. Like, I want him to be way beyond me. And he has the advantage of youth. And I have all the advantage of the wisdom. And I can tell him how to get there, but he has to do these things to do it. He can't just, well, I'm going to go in there and just go all in. It's not Texas Hold'em. It's trading for a living. And you're trying to do one of two things. Build wealth or make ends meet. In the beginning, you can't build wealth. You have to make ends meet. That means you have to consistently do things that make sense to erase the debts that you have to pay out every single month. Those debts, you're going to have them the rest of your life. I'm rich, and I still have to pay utility bills. I still have to pay all these little things that add up. Amazon Prime, you know, HBO Max. Like I got everything. There isn't a channel or a service out there that my wife or kids don't have. And I don't watch TV, <laughs> but I have to pay for that. It's a bill. Okay. I could sit down and say, you know, you don't need all this stuff, but I don't care. It's a write off. All these things are a write off. So I use that to my benefit. That's the justification I, I give to myself. But my family, they're spoiled. They don't need to have all these things, but they have them because we can afford to have them. You may not afford them right now, but you can be in a position where it won't matter to you either. But you can't jump to that. Like I was trying to jump as a 20 year old thinking, wow, you know, I can make a lot of money in a very short period of time and I'm only doing it with one contract. So I jumped to doing three and five and 10 contracts of bonds and the S&P. And yes, when I was right, man, it was really nice. But when it was going against me, it paralyzed me in fear. It's scared to live in hell out of me because it's fun and it's exhilarating. And you have that deer in headlights paralysis when it's running off in profit and you just, you don't have a target. You don't know where it's going. You just, I want to go in and see how far it'll go up. And you get stuck looking at the chart and it's just going, 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 going. And you don't know when to get out. And I would overstay my welcome. And then I think, oh, okay, well, it's just retracing down to this level. This old high is going to find some support because it's, a floor now because the ceiling's been broken. Now it's going to be what support wrong, it kept going lower, and I'd find some other old high and draw a line across my chart and expect it to be support, and it wouldn't. And I wouldn't get out of the trade because I had what? I had no structure and what it is I was doing. I was like that million dollar sailboat out there with no rudder. Wherever the wind's going to carry me. As long as I'm in the marketplace, what was happening to me? And I had fortunes going in and out of my account all the time. But no idea where to pull the plug. Whereas if I just simply would have said, you know what? I want to make $1,000 a month, right? Okay, what happens if I just get that for the day and just stop on 20 contracts? Yeah, $20,000 a day. It's hard to stop though, because if you can see the potential to make 50, you're going to do what? You're going to hold for 50. And as a young man with no idea what the hell he was doing, just rolling the dice, that's what I was doing. And it was worse when I started inviting people to see me doing it. And I would get a high off of being right in front of everybody. And I'd be like, yeah. Look at that. See, you and the hell I am. I'm, I'm, I'm the guy that's going to do this in front of you every single day. Ha ha. Look at this. Strength. <laughs> and then when it was bad, I wanted to crawl under a rock. It was too much. I, my ego couldn't allow for that because I didn't build in those, and those expectations in performance. So you won't have all those problems if you use low-hanging approaches to make your, make your ends meet. 
So you start gradually from a very small, low hanging fruit objective and make it so insignificant in terms of money that it won't be hard for you. And you gradually build that up. This is why I tell everybody, you're, you're not going to get good at trading your first year. You're not going to get good at trading in your first two years. It's going to take you five to 10 years to get really good at trading. What's my definition of good? You know yourself. You know what's going to keep you from blowing up and you avoid it. You, you soberly consider the risks that are involved, not just what's the maximum I can make here. See, I guarantee you, if we were doing a poll, like if we were in a live event and I gave out this handout in the beginning, it was a questionnaire, real quick questionnaire. And then you had to drop it off in a box before I got up on the stage and start talking to everybody. It would be, what are you more likely to feel impulsive about? Going after the big money or fear of the losing trade? You're going to be impulsive about making the big money because that's what you've been Me, every other educator out there, every author, every YouTuber, any influencer, we all do the same thing. We all talk a good game about that you can make money doing this. But not all of us talk about the perils of losing money. I do that, and a couple other large name people do it too. But for my knowledge, I have never seen anybody break it down to a point where it's humble beginnings and you start there. I didn't learn that from somebody else. I had to figure that stuff out. And I abandoned it foolishly and just started going after Lambo lifestyle. I want to have the luxe lifestyle, luxury. Everything Port Magazine, that's what I was aiming for. Not, this is the number of pips and points I can get in the marketplace consistently, and I'm going to use money management to do all the heavy lifting. I didn't know what I was doing. And I'm a math guy, science guy, and I got lost in the money. That's what happens, folks. That's it's exactly what happens. And I know some of you, are going to think to yourselves, well, I'm not going to be into that. <laughs> ICT was a fool. We all get bit by that bug. Greed, man, it's a venom that you just don't understand until you feel it. And the problem is you don't even know you're under its influence until it's too late. Ruin. Then you're like, oh, if I just would have realized at that moment. And yeah, every time I blew my account, I knew the exact moment. I should have not done <laughs> the very thing, but yet I still did it because I had no structure. I had no way of determining what it was that I was aiming for. And it's not just a, a dollar amount. What are you striving for? What is it you're aiming for, for your, your trading? What's the goal? What's the reasons why you're doing all this stuff? If it's just to make money, okay, how much? How are you gonna how are you gonna earn that much money? What is it you're trying to do? If you looked at trying to make one percent a day, you'll find out that one percent is pretty easy. And what happens is you get greedy because you know you can get that one percent and it doesn't take a lot of effort to get it. Now, to make 1% one time a week, that is amazing results, folks. Okay, so before I go any further, just know that if that's all you do, you're killing it. Okay, don't let these guys out here that are trying to tell you they make 20% 50R trades every single week. Okay, because believe me, they would put me on welfare if they were making that kind of money. And they would be proving it. They don't. If they're making that kind of money, why are they trading... 0.5 lots on their Forex trades. <laughs> You've been trading like this and making 50 R and 200 R trades for two years and you're still beneath one full standard lot. Come on now. It doesn't hold up. The logic doesn't equate to them telling the truth. So you have to have that in mind as a trader. You have to know where the bullshit is, draw a line in it and say, okay, this is what's going to get me in trouble if I aim to do those things. If I try to duplicate what I see other people doing on Instagram, on Facebook, on Twitter, on ICT videos or whatever, that's not you. You need to go back to your roots. Where are you at right now? Where do you live? How do you live? 
What do you have to pay? Because those bills, whether you watch an ICT video, whether you learn from me or someone else, those bills are coming every single month. That end needs to be met. Now, you have to work your job or jobs, maybe go into school and work your job. You have expenses. They have to be met. You're struggling right now, but that is a temporary thing. That's temporary. It's hard to look past it. When I first got with my wife, when I felt confident, because in the beginning, I did not tell her what I was doing and how I had what I had. And you can look down at me all you want, but I got burned early on with bad relationships. So she was a humble girl and I was attracted to her over time. Once I trusted her, once we had our second child, then she knew who I was. It didn't change her. I have a good one. And that's how she gets to reap the rewards of a queen because she didn't expect it in the beginning. Chase me because of that. Hmm. There's a life lesson in that. Both sides. Her visibility was limited. Because when I first told her what I have and what I can do and what I earn, she didn't believe me. And then I sat her down in front of the computer screens and I said, now watch what I do here. She said, that, that can't be real money. And then it was transferred to the bank. And then we went to the bank and I did a withdrawal and she saw it. And she said, this is not your money. I said, you're right. It's not my money. It came from other people doing the wrong thing. And they lost. I won. Now it is mine. It's in my hand. So I'm claiming this money now is mine, but it's not my money because they lost it fair and square. They made a decision. Their liquidity was my gain. And she's not impressed to, the, to this day. She understands it. She understands that money comes from that, but she's not impressed by it. So again, that gets back to the root cause of why you're doing this. Are you doing this to make ends meet? Are you trying to do this to impress your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your spouse, their in-laws, somebody else outside yourself? Because if you're doing that, I promise you, you're going to do things recklessly. You're going to try to live up to some expectation that nobody's asked you to live up to. Ooh, wish somebody would have told me that. Because when I was 20, <laughs> I was trying to do shit that nobody asked me to do. But in my mind, because I wanted to feel significant, I did it. I would overspend on dumb shit for people that didn't deserve it, didn't even love me, didn't care about me, weren't really my friends. But I was doing those things instead of saying, you know what, I'm going to focus on making ends meet. What's my goals? What's my, what's my purpose of operating this week, this trading day? What's my goal? What's my goal for the week? What's my goal for the, for the month? What's the goal for this quarter? I wasn't doing that. I was looking at how much can I afford to trade? Because that's what I'm trading with. All in. All the time. And that's stupidity. And that's also the reason why I wasn't afraid when the account would get blown. I'm 20. I got plenty of years. You know, I got all the time in the world. It's just going to take me a little bit harder and I'll get another job delivering pizza. Work all day in the evening time. I work at Domino's and I deliver pizza. Do a magic trick at the door for the kids. And here's five bucks. Thank you very much. I only got to get 20 deliveries like that. And I got $100. Well, do that six days a week. It wasn't long. I had enough money to put in your account. And I'm trading again. So that didn't deter me. That didn't cause me to fear doing the all-in type of trading. Because I knew what I was doing was reckless. I was making that decision to do it. Instead of being... Sober minded about it. Not that I was drunk because I never drank alcohol, but I was drunk in the sense that I needed this to be a big play all the time and not realizing all the time I was wasting. If I just would have did small incremental gains, I would have grown more accustomed to and acclimate myself to the pressures of holding these, these big positions. You know, trading 50 contracts of Chicago Board Trade Wheat on the day where they remove the limits. It was in July. 
and there was an issue with the crops. And this thing went nuts. And if I just would have had another cent, maybe a cent and a half, it would have stopped me out. And I would have owed money to the brokerage firm. Money that I didn't have. But it went in my favor. And I got out too, sh too soon, too short of where it really went that day. But I dodged a bullet that day. And that, that was the one that scared the hell out of me. Because I was like, that could have really ruined me. But you live, you learn. And I had to start thinking about, what is it I'm doing? Am I just in here playing lottery? Because that's really what I was doing. I was trying to win the lottery. And you can't do that and last long in this business. Because the lottery wins don't come like that. They're just, there's books written by people that, yeah, I made this much money. I had a windfall victory over here. Windfall. Windfalls are not consistent. They're not likely to happen for you. They're more, less, they're less likely to ever happen for you than anything else. So you have to lower your expectations and have no fear about that. Don't give a shit about these people on the internet that are lying to you saying they're killing it. They're doing this. They're trading 10 times better than that guy, but they got no fucking proof. None of that stuff. They talk out their ass the whole time. You're worrying about all that stuff. You're listening to all that stuff instead of just doing what it is that makes the most sense. The least that can be done consistently. And letting time and money management, the compounding interest of doing the same little thing over and over and over again, that's easy to accomplish. Five handles in the E-mini S&P, five pips or 25 pips a week in Forex. Oh, I mean, I could do so much better than that. Okay. Why aren't you retired? The same kids that talked to me that was to me in 2019 on Twitter want to bark at me. And they're trying to hawk a, a, a system. Dude, why aren't you rich? Why aren't you proving you're making your money? Why can't you go out there and show a live account? You're showing MT4 screenshots. These people are constantly distracting you. And you're buying into that bullshit. You're being distracted and you're not sitting down and you're not working on yourself. You're not minding your own business. This business is not going to run itself. You have to run it. And if you're worried about Tom, Dick, and Harry, okay, and dollar menu mentorships over here, you're not going to learn how to do this for yourself. You're going to flounder and fail. And you're going to sit there and think to yourself, man, how long have I been doing this? And if you start doing that and you start taking inventory and you don't include all the bullshit that you're looking at and wasting time Worrying about keeping up with the Joneses over here. This one's saying that they can do that, but they ain't got any proof. Why are you wasting time? If you have not realized that by looking around now, the world is vastly changing. It's so quickly changing. Every week, something new's coming up, and it isn't good. And your job right now, that's not fucking guaranteed. You have no idea how hard it's going to be. And if you don't put your nose into the charts and start studying, I promise you, you will be typing emails to me saying, I wish I would have fucking listened. Because I had people doing that the last two years. And I don't want to receive those kind of emails. They hurt because you didn't listen to me. I'm not asking you to give me anything. Don't pay me nothing. You don't send me nothing. 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 But you better fucking listen, because if you don't, I promise you, you are not going to be prepared. Your jobs are not guaranteed. Your income is not guaranteed. One of your jobs, say you and your spouse are working. One of you might get sick. One of you might get ill, not be able to work. Can you keep that up and not lose your home, your cars, your health insurance, care for your children? This is a wake-up call. I'm doing this because I give a shit. I know there's going to be a lot of you that aren't going to be prepared for this. But if I do what I'm doing here and you don't do it, 
I have a clean conscience. You were given detailed instructions. You were to, you were talked to by someone. I care. I care about you. I don't know you, but I care about you. All of you are on my mind all the time because I know you're out there fucking around, looking at stupid shit, wasting your time, and you're going to hurt yourself. Wasting time and money. Here, right here, the guy talking to you, I'm giving you my time. I'm giving you my experience. I'm holding your hand. But you got to start doing the work because if you don't, shit's going to be turned upside down real soon. And what you think you're able to do right now to earn a living and pay for things to meet these ends, it's going to get harder. And that should scare the shit out of you. Because it does me, and I'm a multimillionaire. I'm not fearful because I know who I believe in. I know my needs will be met. But I'm fearful for my family members that aren't as equipped as I am. I'm constantly bailing out family members. Helping them do things. Friends, the same way. I love these people. I don't feel like I'm being taken advantage of. I'm the first to offer it. They're not coming to me asking for it. I'm blessed to be in that situation. That's my nature. That's not virtue signaling. I'm telling you, this is something I have dealt with my entire life. Seeing other people lack. And doing what I can. And some people I can't help. Like some students that come to me, they say they do all the, and they show 10 pages in a, in a journal. That's not work. I'm not doing it. That's just writing down what you heard me say. Not going into the charts and finding it yourself and then journaling that. That's the work. That's the boring part. That takes a lot of time. It eats up a lot of time. Your football time, your boys out time, your girls night out time. And for me, it was My own family. Not going to soccer games and baseball games. Missing out on that. Making sure that I had enough to take care of everybody. Because I was focused on ends. I was already rich. But I know that money can go like that. And you need to get yourself prepared. And you start by having very easy objectives. And let compound interest do that magic. Trust me, folks. You don't, you don't believe me? No problem. Do a spreadsheet. I don't care what you start with. Do 100 bucks. The math is there. I don't think you should be trading with 100 bucks. I mean, go back and change that. Because I know I've said many times in the past where a lot of people go in and say, oh, I'm going to open up $100. I'm going to get rich. No. You got to be properly funded. What is that? I think, honestly, if you're trading less than $10,000, you are not equipped. Not, not equipped to do what needs to be done. You're going you're gonna to gamble. You're going to do things, and when you take a loss, it's going to feel like, oh, I'm so close to not having enough money, and you'll trade recklessly. Now, $10,000, I'm talking that amount of money with micros. What? I could trade $30 at AMP. Yeah, I know you can. I can too. But that's stupid. Go into this with very easy, low-hanging fruit objectives. Something so small that you can hit easily. And don't let anybody else out there tell you, oh, you're not good. That's not enough. Oh, you suck. You're never going to get rich doing that. These same people, I'm promising you this, they're the same people that bark at me. They're working a job, folks. They're working a job. They're talking on their text and you know, their little Twitter between their oil changing. OK, before scrubbing the floor at Walmart. OK, they're all working. They're all working. And they're critiquing you and me. And we're out here doing it. We're calling it. I'm trading it. You're trading it. You're seeing all these other people get there getting funded. They're getting their scratch. They're not sitting on their ass. They're doing the work. They know it isn't going to fall on their lap. They're putting the work in. And you know what? Kudos. Well fucking done. That's the right thing. That's the right thing. Not sitting around just watching videos. I mean, you're never going to get this doing this. 
You have to study. You have to dig in. You got to go into those charts and say, you know what? I'm going to defer all my wants and all my extra things, my fun stuff. I'm putting that on the side. I got time for that right now. I got business to work right now. I have a business to run. I'm building an empire. I have time for all these people in my life dragging me down. Give me some bullshit I got to worry about. You got your own life to worry about. I'm worrying about mine. I got a family to take care of. I have a legacy to build. I have to prepare. There's some shit coming. There's a storm coming. I got to make sure I'm ready for it. There's got to be a fire under your ass. If it's not there, check out. Turn off. Don't come back to this channel. Don't look at me. Don't, don't, don't look at any of my videos. Don't do any of that shit because the only thing you're going to do is going to piss and moan that it doesn't work for you because you didn't do the work. Because there's all these people around you. They're proving it. And none of them regret it. They all say one thing. I wish I would have listened sooner. And this is one of those series that I want you all to know going in. This is some really real shit. You have to get ready. Things are going to get so hard economically. You aren't ready for it. I'm not ready for it. That's why I'm steady in here. I'm, I'm trading. I'm, I am in here. Okay, I'm getting ready to hunt and do all kinds of shit in the fall. I'm ready. And I got millions. I'm not ready. So you're going to talk to me? Oh, yeah, you know, I got a funded account. I'm ready. You ain't ready. You are not ready. You got to constantly be working. But don't lose sight. Don't get stupid. Don't get in here and start making crazy bets because you want to see a windfall victory. That stuff isn't, isn't, isn't time for that. This is... Getting your ends meet. Getting your ends to meet every single week, every single month. Not worrying about it because I'm going to tell you something. Scared money makes no money. If you're scared shitless because you're probably going to lose your job. Your spouse is about ready to lose their job. Your car went up and you can't afford no $55,000 for a fucking Tacoma that's overpriced. Everything's overpriced. The limited Highlander I just replaced my 19 with, $68,000. That truck should not be $68,000. Everything's jacked up. Everything. Just because I'm ICT doesn't mean I'm exempt. I got to pay shit that's exorbitant just like anybody else does. But are you in a position where you can just go out there and just dip in? Here you go. Here's $68,000 for a new Highlander. Here's $62,000 for a Rubicon. Here's $55,000 for a Tacoma for your son. No, I didn't pay cash for that one, for that one, though. But it is what it is. It still costs $55,000, right? Uh, it, they're in my ass for $55,000. If my son don't pay it, it I got to pay for it, right? So that's the end that has to be met. So I got my thumb on my son pressing. Your ass is going to be working towards getting that bill met every single month. So now he has what? He has a fire under his ass. That's what has to happen sometimes. And when I talk to you, not all of you need these types of discussions. I am aware of that. But I have the young folks in mind because they tend to feel like everything is expected just to be given to them. And I'm reminding them that nobody owes you shit. You work for it. And if you don't work for it, you don't fucking get it. And nobody feels sorry for you. Nobody's going to feel sorry for you when you can't make ends meet and you didn't get yourself prepared when things get really hard. When things get really hard, these markets are going to go all over the place. And if you're not prepared to be in them, you're without. And if you're without and without a job, or if you have new financial restrictions placed on you because now you went from two incomes to one, how do you think you're going to be able to trade under that pressure? You're not. You're going to be scared shitless. You're going to be fearful, afraid to push the button, or do reckless trades because you're going to be waiting too long for confirmation. It will already it already moved. And then when you put the trade on, it still might work in your favor, but it starts pulling back and have a natural retracement, and you're afraid, and you get out, and it still goes in your favor if you would have stayed in. That's what scared money does. So that's why I'm telling you, in this series, I really am pushing hard for you to have a very low Threshold objective. Something that's so easy, so easy, and let money management and the 
compound interest, do all the heavy lifting. You don't ever have to do anything more than just five handles in the index market. You don't have to do anything more than 25 pips a week. The money grows, and as it grows, you carry more leverage. The risk doesn't grow in exponential fashion. The monetary association to the equity will, obviously, because that goes with the, you know, the, the game. The more money you make, if you're risking 1% of that account and the account is growing, that 1% will grow exponentially too. But you can't understand the, the effects of that if you try to rush through it. Just because you can get lucky and do over leveraged trades and you get this new equity high, all of you out there saying, oh, I want to I get a $500,000 funded account. The fuck you do? You don't have any idea how to trade a $10,000 account right now. You can't even manage that risk. You're talking about you want a half a million dollars in a funded account. You want to be able to trade with $500,000 leverage. You're, you're going to die. You're, you're literally going to blow your brains out. More money is not how you fix this. It's more experience growing gradually. I'm telling you, I'm fucking telling you, you are not going to do a half million dollar funded account and do well. If you think you're just going to go up there, pass the challenge and get that on your first go, you ain't been trading for a year or two or three. You think you're just going to go out there and do that? I'm telling you, I'm telling you, don't think like that. You're doing it wrong. What's the lowest funded account? Go that route. Trade with that. Build that up. Because if you can't build that $10,000 or $20,000 leverage funded account up to a $500,000 account in two years, guess what? You sure as fuck wouldn't have done anything with that $500,000 account. You're not prepared for it. You have no idea what it feels like to be in those types of trades. That's why you see everybody, they put their little certificate up, said, I got funded. And then two weeks later, I blew it. I'm not talking down, down to you. I'm talking to you. Eye to eye. You're doing what I'm telling you what not to do. And so many of you are in line to do the same bullshit and hurt yourself and prolong this whole process. What's the lowest hanging fruit object? Do. And as the money grows, more money will be allocated to each trade. The percentage of risk is not increasing. That stays constant. And as the equity grows, the results will grow comparably. And you don't get sucked into this. I have to do it right now. I got to have it all right now. No, you don't because you're not prepared for it. Mentally, psychologically, you can't, ha you can't handle it. You can't. You cannot handle that type of success. When a winning trade like that gets put on, you're not going to be able to sleep. You'll be out of the trade. I'm telling you like no doze. You ain't sleeping. Like a crack fiend, okay? Scratching yourself like that Dave Chappelle meme. <laughs> you want another hit? You want a little bump? Because it's exciting. And I've had that happen so many times. And it's demoralizing when you realize that's what it was. And that's what you're creating. You're creating that habitual drug usage feeling in your trading. That's not how people do it that are doing this for their lifetime. Career traders are not looking for that bump. They're working their business. They're running their business. They're managing their business. It's not casino time to them. They're going in with the intended purpose they're not winging it they're not being influenced by other people they're not telling them it's not good enough they don't give a fuck what anybody else thinks they're doing what needs to be done for them because every one of us has a unique threshold for pain and pleasure some of you are a little bit kinkier than i am in trading you have to know where your thresholds are and if you start stretching yourself outside those boundaries, which you're going to learn as soon as you start trading with live funds, you're going to see how hard it is to hold on to a winning trade. But it's easy to hold on to a losing trade. Why is that? You don't want to submit to a loss. But you 
really want to get out of that winning tree because you think it's the only one that's ever going to happen to you. You found the unicorn, and you want to make sure you have evidence, and you want to bring it back and show it to your friends and family, your coworkers, your boss. Ha! Look at this fucker. You said I wasn't ever going to make any money. Look at this. Stick that up your ass. That's what you want. So what are you trading for? Outward validation. Professional traders don't give a shit what anybody else thinks about them or their trading or their abilities or their model or how little their threshold is that they go for every time they put a trade on. See, in the beginning, you have to have that structure. You have to have that limit placed on you. They're training wheels. And don't let anybody tell you that they're not useful or needed because they are. Why else is everybody else blown out? Because they have no structure, no limitations placed on themselves. It's 2% risk, no stop. Let's go. And I have no limits on how many times I can take a trade. If I take a loss, I'm going to go back in again because I have enough equity. And I'll keep doing it until I can't because I know eventually I'm going to get a winning trade. Not taking in consideration that they have no structure. They have no low-hanging threshold to make ends meet. So they're just going in to throw the dice and see if they get a win because they know in their mind they're going to go in and manage that winning trade correctly now after taking five losing trades in the same day. The fuck you are. Folks, I'm telling you, these are things I did. Not just once, dozens of times. And you got to know that you're not going to be exempt from it. And believe me, this might be an uncomfortable conversation that you don't want to be listening to. You want to get to, okay, get to the part where it feels good. That ain't got kind of serious, folks. This is where the rubber meets the road. I already taught you how to trade. Now I'm telling you how to survive. Because having that 50 caliber Barrett, you could still hurt yourself. There's a whole lot of people out there that buy all the next best things and gadgets and things. And they still are useless. Because they haven't properly been trained. Your intelligence as a trader, just because you now know this model and you know what it looks like and how to find them, your intelligence as a trader is infantile right now. You're still an infant. You're a baby. And that's not a knock against you. You have to be aware of that. And you have to take baby steps. And then you start moving towards where you're walking a little bit more efficiently without anybody holding your hand. And then eventually you'll get stronger and more coordinated. And then you can run. And then you become an adult. And you have all that adult muscle and capability and stability and agility, all those things that lead towards you are able to do things that a small child can't. And right now, as a small infant in your understanding about the markets and your personal experience, you can't grasp the importance or the weight of the things I'm talking about right now because you haven't endured it yet. But once you do these types of lessons, mean much more. And that's why these yahoos that got there and say, oh, these guys, he's just going on and on and on. He ain't talking about nothing. That's how you know they ain't made no fucking money. They ain't never made money. The people that don't want to have conversations like this and talk about these, this is the real world. This is what real trading is about. It's not pushing a button, winning, hey, holla, up there on Instagram, look at me. Here's my rented Lamborghini. Here's my rent flat that I don't really live in. Come on. Here's my fake watches. I ain't going to zoom in because you don't see it's fake. <laughs> this is the same bullshit, man. You guys like all that stuff because it's entertaining. Well, I'm not trying to entertain you. I'm trying to turn you into a fucking monster where you go in there and you say, you know what? I don't give a shit if you fire me tomorrow. I don't give a shit if this business I work for closes the fuck down next week. I don't care. I'm feeding me and mine. There ain't nothing you're going to do to stop me from doing that. Period. Nothing you can say about it. I don't give a shit what influencer on the internet says anything about me. I'm still going in here fucking kids. Nothing stopping that and nothing stopping you as my student. Nothing. It's just air and opportunity between you and you getting that realization of that profit. That's it. That's nothing separating it. But you have to make that move. And you can't do it just jump out there blindly. You got to have a structured approach to it. And you're all going to have a different approach. Period. What's your low threshold objective? It might be $500 a week. It might be $100 a week. You might be a stay-at-home mom. 
You don't need a whole lot. The husband's taking care of everything. You got a big nest egg, but you want to do this on your own. You want to contribute. You want to feel like you're bringing something to the table. You know what? That's admirable. And you might be thinking, all I have to do is make $100 a week and then let that grow and build up. Man, in two years, you could still be doing amazing returns if you let the compound effect take root. But you have to cement to that part of that time. That's why, again, I get back to working with a year of mentoring. Mentoring for a full year is crucial because you're going to feel all those factors of downtime when the markets are just simply not willing to give you anything. And you got to know what it looks like. What does it feel like? Can you even tolerate that? Because there's a lot of students that came through my fold that threw it in. And, this is too hard. It, it's not working for me. And not listen to me in my experience saying we're in a period where it's not going to be high probability. Oh, he's always saying it's never high probability. Man, get the fuck out of here. I know when it's high probability. And I tell you, okay? And when it is, it is. But if it's not, it's not. I can't make it not be high probability. Well, let's just say Warren Buffett would be wanting to talk to me, <laughs> okay? I'm not a billionaire, okay? I'm not a billionaire. Point is, you have to know what you're doing this for, what limitations you have to place on yourself and not have any reservations about why you're doing it and adhere to it. So ends, what is it that for you? What makes your ends meet? What's that dollar amount that covers all your bills, all your expenses, all your entertainment? That number has to be a specific number. Then inside that total month expense, they're your total end. What's the lowest one? Maybe it's a better idea for some of you to start there. But you should be moving towards getting to the most expensive one. And I did a poll on Twitter. And I did a poll on my community tab on the YouTube channel. And I asked everyone, I said, what's your largest? I already knew it's going to be mortgage or rent. Okay, that that's, goes without saying. But I just want to make sure I had the data to prove to everybody this is why I'm saying what I'm saying. But everybody understands that's going to be the largest expense. So... What is your rent? What is your mortgage payment every single month? That's your largest expense. So you might start with the smallest bill, like a credit card or a utility bill or some kind of expense, like a car note. Not that $900 is a small car note, because it's, in my mind, even with the money I have, yeah, that's a lot of money for a car payment. Like, we're not talking about like a BMW. I mean, it's a Tacoma pickup truck. It's nothing special, but it's a note. It needs to be paid. So how do you go in and attack that? And then each time you get to that threshold of meeting some low-hanging objective in your ends that need to be met, so in other words, whatever the lowest bill is, you start there. And then you graduate towards what's the next bill. If you start making that money, work up to the largest expense, which is either rent or mortgage. And then once you have that, even if it's 50% of that, that's a huge weight off your shoulders and an encouragement to your – as a trader, you're, you're – encouraged. You don't need anybody else to tell you you're doing the right thing. You don't need anybody to give you a boy, a girl, pat on the back. You feel it because you see it. Like, I know I'm making this money. And while you're building up your account, you're telling yourself constantly, I'm consistently working towards this. And it's growing. It's building up. I'm not trying to get rich overnight, wealthy, trying to fall in front of everybody. But, you know, it's, that, this is not the time for that. You need to make sure that you have food in the house. You need to make sure that your bills are met, that your roof stays over you, your car stay running, stay fueled up, your health and health expenses are covered, clothing, your children's needs are met, daycare. Good grief. I'm sure you guys have to pay for that or paying out your ass for that. What if that's covered in your trading and that's all you ever got out of it? Is that failure? Think about it, folks. If you got your children's costs covered every single month, but you still have to keep your job, is that failing in trading? Now, if you ask the 20-year-olds without kids, fuck yeah, that's, 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 you ain't living. You're failing because that's their mentality. It's rich or nothing. And that's, that's their youth. That's how I was, too. You, you have to have everything or you had nothing. But when you have a child, you have, I mean, when you have children, a family to take care of, and you're participating in a family, a working family, perspectives and 
observations change and they mature. And those of you that are in those circumstances understand that, man, if you had just half your mortgage paid every single month, how much would that be off your back? That's all I'm suggesting here is a beginning point. It might be your full mortgage that you can pull out. But if you get anything that's not having to come out of your pocket from your job or your earned income, and you're having a secondary income from this, and I'm not promising it's going to happen for you because this all relies on you doing it. But I'm trying to put the mindset together for you so that way you go in with the right perspective because you have a skill set now. You have a model. It works, folks. Nobody's going to be able to come up here anywhere on social media. Call me out. Just call me out. I'm right here on Twitter. I can't hide from any comments. Everybody can talk to me. But you come to me with some, some stupid shit. I'm blocking you. But tell me what I'm doing is wrong or show me what you got is better. Outline it beforehand. Don't just say, here's what I did yesterday. Here's the trades I took. Don't, pull, don't buy into that bullshit. You are here to learn how to trade. You've been taught. But now you need to know how to engage as a trader. So what do you start doing? You don't go out there going nuts. Don't, don't think, oh, I'm not going to go out here and just kill it. Do the maximum, maximum effort. No, 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 no. Reserved effort. Low-hanging fruit objectives. Don't try to do more than it's reasonable for you because you're just now learning. You just got this weapon in your hands. You have to learn how to clean it, store it, carry it, and not blow your head off. Because that's what most people do. I had a lot of good meaning folks come through, pay me too. All the way up to month 11 and stop because they didn't want to listen. But everybody quit because they couldn't afford it. They just didn't want to listen. They, they know themselves. So why make that last payment, that charter member payment? Because they just can't do it. Okay. They know themselves better than I do. But there's a lot of you that know yourselves better than I do and know that you want this and you know that you have everything in your being is telling you you're going to do this and ain't nobody out there going to tell you that you're not that's my audience right now that's who I'm talking to because if you're on the fence and you think somebody can influence you to talk you out of doing this or not using what it is I've taught you're not my audience you're not a student you're just a casual observer and you're never going to make it in any trading whatsoever because you're too influenced by other people. Someone that has been in my study, in my mentorship, in my teachings and lectures for at least three months, they've seen enough this year to know that there's, there's absolutely something here that is worthwhile. It can be exploited in the marketplace. It's there. It's a real edge. It repeats. It's algorithmic. It's not random. And it's time specific so that way you know when you're going to be operating. Think about this. All these businesses that are brick and mortar, okay, like a storefront. You go in there and you buy your shoes, buy your clothes. How do they know when, when sales are going to come in? They have sales reports and, ten, and trends where certain times of the day, on certain days of the week, this is where we have a rush of customers usually. But there's no real guarantee that that's going to happen. You don't know if there's going to be customers coming into your business. In this business I've laid out for you, I give you a business plan. Every single day, you're looking at the market between 8.30 and 11. That's your storefront hours. There's your business hours, okay? It's not a full day, and you're looking for something to happen. You're waiting for a customer to come through the door. That means you're watching to see when liquidity is getting taken, okay? They took something off the rack, they're interested, okay? You're standing at the register, make sure that sale's done. But they might change their mind. The market might run off and they may put it back on the rack and leave. It's the same thing with this business. But you have to be there. You have to be in front of the market waiting for that opportunity. You, gotta be, you have to have the store open or you're not going to make the sale. Every other business out there, they have all this overhead, all these costs, all these requirements for employees. You're the boss. You're the employee. You have operating hours. It's very easy. 8.30 to 11. Boom. Done. If a customer doesn't walk through the door, that means the setup doesn't come in. Guess what? You didn't have to work hard for that day. You just had to, you had to have the doors open. 
the lights on. And that's sometimes what trading's like. Just because your ass sits down in front of you and you're getting a trade, the market that. This is bullshit, man. I've been sitting here. It better give me an F FVG. It better give me a fair value. It better. Somebody's ass is in a sling if it don't give me an FVG. <laughs> it's funny reading some of you guys. Your expectations and entitlements are ridiculous. It's funny. Entertaining as shit, but it's unrealistic. It's crazy. But that's what trading's like sometimes. You could be ready to do it. And I'm not ready to do it. And you got to be okay with that. And no, guess what? Your model ain't broken. Your threshold, your five handles, is not too much. It's going to give it to you, just not that day or that session. Don't want to trade in the morning? Do you think it's too much volatility and uncertainty? Okay, no problem. Wait until after lunch. Use the PM session stuff I've given you. There's a lot of times, the last 90 minutes of trading, that's the easy stuff. Because you can see what it's done in the morning, all that uncertainty, the bias is still in play, and the higher time frame daily chart is going to lead you to what? Where is it growing to? And usually the last 90 minutes to 60 minutes, the algorithms really kick in, market on close orders, start piling in, and boom, you get this real nice, easy, pre you know, predictable market environment where liquidity is ran to. That could be your model. That could be your five handles if you're index trading. So obviously you can see what the way this conversation went. It just wouldn't fit in a YouTube video. And I'm now thinking about it. I'm not going to be putting it on <laughs> YouTube, but uh, I probably put it on SoundCloud because I am recording it. It should be a good audio uh, capture. If the Twitter space wasn't that good, if there's some breakups in it or whatever, um, I apologize. It's not intended. can't do anything with that, but I think with the way I've been recording with my regular micro microphone, uh, it should be okay on a SoundCloud playback. So I'll add that sometime this evening. I'm not rushing to do it. But I wanted to have this conversation with you to kind of like align your mindset with now you have this skill set. You have this model. What do you do with it? Don't go out there thinking that you have to do above average returns or superhuman or Olympic level feats because that's what it feels like in our community sometimes. It feels like everybody is expected to do ICT level precision in and out, buy long, sell short, all the same day. That's not, I'm your teacher. I don't expect you to do that. That's not realistic, that's not reasonable. What I believe you should be doing is taking an inward look at how you have to live because the way you live is not the same way I live. And 20 students of mine, they're gonna have a amazing contrast between what they have to have each month in some countries very little is required but where they're at that little bit is a lot and what they see is potential in the marketplace would literally make them kings or queens immediately in other places like in the united states where everything's extremely expensive it takes a whole lot to elevate ourselves up to a point of affluence but if affluence is your goal, then obviously I've given you enough to get that. You have to submit to the time to get to it. But having these unrealistic expectations and high lofty profit objectives that you have to do every single day, every single week, come on. Nobody told you you had to do that. I didn't tell you you had to do that. So I'm taking you back to square one, the same way I started on baby pips, 25 pips a week for Forex or five handles a day, which was what? 25 handles a week in futures. That's a nice living if you let the compound interest do all the heavy lifting. What do you think happens when you get to a quarter of a How much can you trade with that? And you're getting 25 handles a week? Do the math on it. That's the homework assignment for you to figure out what's the lowest you can do. And if you just did the lowest, and let compound interest do its job, not trying to get rich real quick, not trying to quit your job right now. I'm reminding you, you're working your job. You need to keep that. Every possible way of income right now, you need to be maximizing that and preparing your household and your family for rough times, buying extra stuff, canned goods, 
household wares, things that you're probably not going to be able to get in a couple months because you're just simply not going to be able to get it or afford it. And not be worrying about relying on your job because you're going to be growing your business to replace that job. And that is a feeling of empowerment that I cannot articulate. No one can tell you what it really feels like. You can see everyone else do it and be encouraged because they'll give you their testimony about how oh, yeah, I did this and I did that. And this is what it feels like. It doesn't resonate the same way until you have it done yourself. And when it happens, nobody's going to tell you you wasted your time. No one's going to be able to tell you that. You're not going to hear it. You'd be, you know, with me to say, go fuck yourself. But you might be pleasant about it and say, you know, I'm, I don't agree with that and I don't regret it. But for naysayers and people that want to talk down and, and discourage you, that pisses me off. Because really what you're trying to do is they're trying to steal joy. They're trying to steal legacy. Okay. They kind of take that from you. And I'm working my ass off to make sure that you have that opportunity right in front of you. And I'm constantly reminding you, it's a real thing. It's really here. But it isn't going to just fall into your lap. It takes effort. It takes work. It isn't going to be positive every single time that you sit down in front of the charts. It isn't going to feel like a good, feel warm and fuzzy moment because you studied or back tested. Or you may take a trade, whether it's in demo or if you ever eventually go into live funds. It may not work for you. That doesn't change shit. This stuff still works. One losing trade or a series of losing trades does not make a model a failure. It just means that you did something wrong and you own it. Guess what that does? It frees you up to not worry about your model not being effective. It just means that you have room for improvement. All of us have room for improvement. I have room for improvement. I still, I still fuck up and put typos and tweets I should stop and read read before I hit the send button. But I don't give a shit. I push it. But then once I do it, my OCD kicks in. And I wish I would have done it. <laughs> so, you know, I'm human. I'm not AI. And the same thing with my trades. I sometimes exit just a little bit too soon. And if I just would have held on to it one or two minutes longer, it would have been a better favorable thing for me. I wrestle with that all the time, all the time. So you're always going to have room to grow, to improve upon. None of us have it all figured out, and that includes me. If I was absolutely perfect, believe me, my ego would fucking show it to you. I would be out here flaunting it all the time. So if anybody else is out there saying they got something better, they'd be out here doing that shit too. So you don't see it happening, so stop wasting time. Put your head in the, in the charts. Stop worrying about dumb shit that isn't going to put anything in your pocket. It isn't going to help you learn how to trade. Okay? Focus. We are a community of like-minded individuals. Okay? We're looking for the same thing in the market. Now, all of us are not going to trade it the same way. We're all going to do something different. We're going to look at a different market all the time. I know a lot of you are still in Forex, and I'm focused primarily in index futures right now. But you're all able to see things, and I didn't take you to the chart. That should feel really good. That should feel real empowerment. But sometimes that doesn't feel enough. You, you feel like you got to be coddled. You got to have a, a little bit of a, a moment of you're doing the right thing. You need to be validated. Stop looking to me to validate you. If you know what you looked for and it panned out in your chart, you do not need me to tell you you did well if it was a positive expectation at the end of it realized. You need me to tell you to do it the right way? I understand it feels like it's too good to be true. I understand that. But stop looking for outward validation. Everything you need is going to be found by yourself. And grow comfortable with that solitude all by yourself doing it. Because that's what the real world trading is like. As soon as you start uh, you know, putting time into allowing other people into your business, it's never a good thing. Because nobody's volunteering labor for your trades, okay? And they're not going to critique you the way that you think you should be critiqued. They're probably going to give you some bullshit because they probably said they're, they've been in it longer than you. They made more money. They had more leverage. Their stop loss was smaller. This isn't the type of business where we sit down like in the cigar room and talk about how you know our businesses are doing really well and we all can snooty about it. This is an industry where everybody's pulling out their thing and measuring it all up. Okay. That's what it's all about. So don't invite it. Because no matter what you say or even show, 
somebody else is going to get out there and say some bullshit and say they can do it better. And chances are 99% of the time they're not going to be approve it. They're just in there to, to get a rise out of you. And that little bit of time that you've wasted giving that attention that could have been used to encourage yourself by going through your journal, looking at times when you did it right. Because you might be going through a period of time where you're doubting that you are going to be able to do this. And that's why journaling is important. You have to know what it was like when you were doing the right things and what it felt like. That's what you record in your journal. Only the positive things. And when it's negative, you say, okay, this doesn't work. This doesn't work here. I did this wrong, and I'm learning from it. See what I just did there? I acknowledge the fact that the responsibility was mine. I did something wrong, and I'm using it to learn how to improve and not hopefully repeat that same effect in my future traits. It completely removes the negativity. It doesn't give me a report card where I go home with a D and I don't want to show my mother, okay, that type of regret or anxiety. You're going to have losing trades. I have losing trades. You're going to think it's going to go up and it goes down and you either get in line with that or you don't. But you have to have all those things factored in into your ends. How does this meet your ends? Because if you start doing shit outside of the goals and models and routine that you're working towards each day and week, the things that you structured, what is it you're trying to do? How do you get that $250 a week? How many handles, how many pips do you have to do that across the week? How many trades are you going to try to aim for? You can do it in one 25 pip trade, or you can do it in two trades, one 10 pip, one 15 pip. Or you can do it in five, five pip. It's how you feel comfortable doing it. And you grow from that. And you let time and experience build on it. And the whole time you're doing that, you're learning to know what it feels like to have more equity in the account. And that increased risk by money, not percentage. The amount of equity at risk is always going to be associated to the risk parameter you're placed on it. No more than 2%. I'm thinking 1% is ideal for all of you, preferably less than, because you're new. But you can do a lot if you just make 1% a day. Some of you think you have to do more than that. Oh, I'm not impressed by this. This isn't enough. That's a trick. That's a pitfall. That's a snare. Because 1% is phenomenal. That's a lot. You start doing that over years, man, you're in a league that is rarely ever seen in any financial circles. Like you're, you're on the path to becoming really, really affluent. And you won't be swayed by the knocks, the losses, because you've done this growing from my beginnings. And you know what it feels like to have winning and losing, winning and losing. It takes it away from you when you lose, right? But it's not debilitating your account. It's not removing the potential for you to have more business done with that account. Because if you roast that account, not only do you have regret and you're going to feel bad that you didn't stick to your, your game plan. What's your game plan? Well, I, what are you aiming for? You have to have goals. You see all these nincompoops out there that are literally out there telling people you shouldn't have trading goals. Get the fuck out of here, dude. These are the same people. I'm a prop trader renting a flat. Ain't got no fucking money. I'm begging people to buy my course. That's, who, that's who's talking to you. That, that person. They're going to tell you that you shouldn't have goals. And you have to have goals. When you run a business, any business, they all have goals. They will have sales numbers they're trying to reach for. They may not hit them, but they're going to learn while they're doing it. Okay, this campaign didn't work. This strategy didn't work. So we aren't going to waste any more time and money on that. We're going to cancel that out. And we're going to pour money into the things that were working. What was that? When we were striving to hit 25 pips a week, 25 handles a week. That was easy as shit to get. We had customers coming through the door every fucking day between 8.30 and 11 o'clock. Something was lining up. And if you have yourself a little pool of markets, both index markets, maybe a commodity like, I don't want to say gold, but let's say a metal, okay, or um, a currency, futures, or Forex, stock, okay, those Create these setups and you go in, you zero in, which one's is forming in? 
go after it when it does. You're running a business. When someone comes to the door of your storefront between 8.30 and 11 o'clock, you got to close that sale. That means you got to be attentive, be ready to engage them. When that fair value gap is there and price goes up into it, that's the register being stood by by the customer. They got their money in their hand. You got to take it from them or you're going to stare at them and let them just walk away. Are you going to run your business? Or are they going to leave your storefront and go into somebody else's trading account? Because I'm going to tell you something. My shit's open for business. I'm waiting. And when they come in there to get something, they're going out with more than they thought they were going to buy. Because I'm going to milk the shit out of them. I'm going to pyramid when I can. I'm going to take whatever I can. And I'm going to do that every single time. Because that's what they came there for. <laughs> they may not like it afterwards. They spent too much money. But guess what? It's in my hands now. And that's how you have to do business. Trading is just like that. It's not meant for everybody. But you have to run your own business. You have to mind your own business. And you have to do things to make ends meet. And your ends are not the same as mine. They're not the same as 20 other people in the community. But our community is growing. It's thriving. You can see how we encourage one another. That's how I want it. We don't put up with any bullshit. Someone comes here talking shit, show us. Because you ain't showing us, get the fuck out of here, man. Nobody's buying that bullshit no more. Nobody's got time for it. Because you tasted and seen now what the real shit is. You you've seen it. You've tasted it. You've watched it. Real accounts, multiple people doing it, all showing proof that they can do it. Recording it on YouTube. My students are doing that. Where's everybody else at? Where's all these other mentors? I'll make a million dollars a year. I can do this. I'm the greatest mentor in the world. I've won four fucking competitions. And nobody in that knew I was in a competition with them. But guess what? I got no fucking students proving I can make any money. Where the fuck are they at? How many 120 days do you need? Hello? But here's my boys. My gals. Right there on YouTube. Recording their entries. Management. Boom! Over. And over and over and over. And the army just keeps growing and growing and growing. And I fucking love it. Because there's none of you. None of you have the excuse to sit on the fence and say, yeah, but how do I know it works? <laughs> if you got that question in you, you got to move along. Because there's so much evidence now. Stevie Wonder can see it. But anyway, hopefully you guys got the right mindset now. You don't have to do a lot. You have to do something. Whatever that is, you have to be consistent with it. And let it be very, very low threshold. Very easy. And that's what I wanted you to have going into this. And maybe I could have done it in a five-minute discussion. But I don't like doing that. I like dragging you across the coals and making you think about things that you wouldn't otherwise think about that are really useful things that you're going to endure you're going to have these feelings. You're going to encounter them. You're going to have these adversities, these second guesses or regretful things, but you didn't listen to me. I'm taking you into those moments so that way you think about it right now. It's safe to feel it and think about it where it doesn't harm you, but to start at least let it resonate with you that, hey, if this does happen, I'm going to real, really feel bad because I was warned in advance and I have a way to avoid it. And if I mess it up, whose fault is it? Is it ICTs? Fuck no, it's not my fault. It's not the system. It's not the model. It's yours. It's yours. Because guess what? When I lost fucking money, it ain't my wife's fault. It's not my dog's fault. It's not anybody else's fault. It's mine. I pushed the button. I didn't get out when I should have. Or I was wrong when I put the trade on. And you have to eat that. You have to own it. That's your responsibility as a business owner. You did it wrong. Eat it. Learn from it. Improve upon it. Man, I could go on so many different tangents right now. But anyway, I'm looking at the time we are at the two-hour mark. And congratulations if you've endured this long. Man, you got some endurance. The stamina. Ha-ha. <laughs> ICT strong, baby. But I'm going to close this one. I've rambled on enough. It's Saturday. i got things I want to get into. My wife, I'm sure, is probably wanting me to 
come up out of this cave and do something with her. So we'll do that. What my whistle here before I say my goodbyes. Um, I've had a lot of feedback given to me about what expectations are with this series. And some of them are really, really good suggestions. It was one of the reasons why also I wanted to delay instead of doing it last night with the first episode. Um, you wouldn't have got a two hour presentation, obviously. But some of the suggestions that were sent to me through uh, TradingView and, and things that, you know, come to me by way of email were very good. And they changed my first episode outline. They were that good. So I want to kind of like utilize some of the things that they asked me to incorporate and some of the issues that they were enduring because they can make money. But now this is the things that they're encountering, which I thought to myself were wonderful teaching tools and elements to learning because it's real people doing it with real money. And I think that's something that is noteworthy. If you're going to be listening to anybody, you should be listening to someone that's obviously doing it with real money and the real hardships and or uh, positive things that's coming from them doing it. That's a real addition to you learning. And it, it, there's no better way if, if you're getting the feedback from someone that's actually doing it, not just me, because I can say I can do this and I can go out there and trade the live account. I can do this and do that and call the market, do all that stuff. It's not the same as you watching other people that have learned just like you. They didn't get any kind of special treatment. They just did the things I'm telling you to do. Those things helped them the same way they can help you but you're going to have a different arrival time. You know, it's going to happen on time. Trust me. It happens all the time for everybody when they stick with it, but you don't have any excuse now to, to think that it doesn't work. Okay. That, that's the main takeaway. So if that's the case, then you have every reason to dig into it and submit to that time, however long it takes and keep working towards it because it's worth it. It's absolutely worth it. And if you get like, I'm trying to press on my son, he's going to have to come up with, a thousand dollars a month. He has to consistently do that. And if he, the truck note doesn't get paid, that means daddy's got to pay for it. And that means he's in my pocket. Okay. Or well, I'm in his pocket rather for a thousand dollars. So he, he owes me. So he doesn't want that. I don't want him to have that either, but it now gives him a framework that he has to now start building from. And then when he gets his new home up here, he'll have that in addition to. So, He's learning how to make ends meet while he's getting his credit established. And I'm being more proud as a dad as we go along through that process. But all these steps, you're going to have to do that, whether you're an adult that's got children or if you're a young guy or gal and you're going through the process of becoming a, a independent adult living on your own too. These are all things you have to learn how to do. And unfortunately, they don't teach us that stuff in school. They teach us a bunch of bullshit that has nothing to do with anything. And that's why we don't put our kids in public school, we homeschool because they would never learn anything that's useful. You don't even teach you how to manage a checkbook in school anymore. It's crazy. But anyway, I will touch base with you obviously uh, once a week with this series, but I will continuously do the other things I do like the reviews and such. But once a week, I'm aiming for Fridays. So we'll have, I think the first one, the first video, uh, it'll probably be about an hour long. But then after that, I'll aim for like 15 minutes. So each episode will be 15 minutes. I can compress everything I want to do after the first one, because the first one's going to have slides and things that are pertinent to the first episode. And once you have them, I'll refer back to them in all the subsequent episodes. But I don't think it'll be a long, drawn out 40 episode type thing, probably like four, five at most episodes. And I think we'll have everything accomplished with that. And until I talk to you next time, enjoy your weekend and be safe.